Picatrin battery trains. I want to show you my two train sets made up of Picatrin battery trains. The layout here is using the track mainly from one set but with extras provided to give a bit longer run to it. I've got two trains running, one a normal type of train and one a Talgo type. These are the sets as supplied by uh, Picatren who are still on the go today. This is the vintage train set which is the first one I've been using. It actually comes with a loco and two coaches but you'll notice I've got a third coach because I managed to acquire a few extra bits off eBay. Here I am sort of starting the train set off. Normally I'd load it through that sort of track running thing that loads the track from the flat to the onto the track. But unfortunately it didn't work properly. Anyhow, it's now running. And we'll give it a time to do a couple of circuits. Notice the nice light showing there at the front. You notice the uh, stations that are provided as part of the set, the flat, which you fold out when you take it out of the box, and the sort of people are provided on, printed onto it. The second set is the Talgo set which is based on the Talgo train system which is used in Spain. I do believe there's some hopes to bring it into the UK as well. This is the Talgo set and as you notice these are four Those coaches buttons. and it does load properly using the specialised piece of track. I have another video which actually shows it going through double curves much better than a four-wheel car. This is a close-up of the Loco, which is a standard Picatren type Loco. They are all four wheels, only one axle is driven, but on that case the wheels are provided with rubber tyres. The track is actually a plate way rather than flanged wheels on track. It looks like a track from here but in fact the unflanged wheels run inside. Dimension wise it's approximately HO gauge and this for standard gauge track which is four foot eight and a half it's generally considered to be based on an original that Stevens had created a plateway which was five foot between the plates hence the use of four foot eight and a half. Spanish normal gauge is about five foot three but as this is a rather vague scale that doesn't really matter. Now this shows you the Talgo coaches and each of those only has one axle. On the real rolling stock I believe the single axle is at the rear as it's towed along but obviously the designers of the model to make it work better, put the reverse this so there's a wheel at the front of the coach and the last coach instead of only having one axle has two axles. Access to the train or the loco is through the top and it is powered by two D size batteries. This is the size between double A and C. Double A can be used with an adapter and as there's a bigger choice of those, especially rechargeable, probably a good idea. The switch is actually at the front at the bottom of the loco and as you can see there is also a light when it is running. Construction of the locos is basically a plastic body with the printed tin plate wrapped round in two parts. This means that actually all the locos have exactly the same body but the colour and appearance can be changed by using different printed tin plate wraparounds. The coaches are also basically plastic bodies with in this case a complete tin plated printed wraparound. There's also a piece of embossing. The same construction is used for the normal four wheel coaches 
and as you can see for the Talgo type coach. All models using the same shape mean that quite a large number can be carried but there is one interesting exception which is a steam loco which I'm, you can see here in the catalogue. It's a sort of a rather crude body on the field four wheel chassis. The printing of the packaging though is rather interesting. It's rather a sort of combination of uh, <laughs> I don't know where but they're very British looking loco somebody's pinched from somewhere.